And so this is one of the big things you talk yeah. about in that all of the AI resources now are pretty much in the hands of companies and defense industries. Quite a that, lot. The, okay, that have their own agenda for it, yeah. which is, what did you say? Killing, selling. selling. spying, killing, and gambling. Yeah. All the good stuff in life, right? Yeah. <laughs> you say yeah. that with a smile, but it, uh, yeah. it upsets you. I, I mean, day by day, I'm in, enjoying life, right? And, and what's disturbing is this is all being done by 99% really good people, right? Like the people working at Google, I know a lot of them. Good-hearted people, they're just, they're trying to make a sustainable business, right? And, you know, I worked in D.C. for nine years doing AI consulting for various intelligence agencies in Washington. And, you know, the amount of nasty terrorist plots that are squashed by U.S. intelligence agencies is, is, is amazing. Like, so many lives are being saved by the various three-letter agencies in Washington, and almost everyone I knew there has a really noble attitude, and, and you, know, they, you know, they believe they're saving civilization from destruction. So it's mostly good-hearted people trying to do good for the world, but yet the way society is organized, the way governments and corporations have emerged to be organized, through capitalism. Yeah, it's at, well, through however you want to describe the modern uh, oligarchic world economic right. order, right? Okay. I mean, it's, uh, it's large international corporations cooperating with, with governments. I think of it more as corporate socialism than, than competitive capitalism. Okay, but, why do you call it that? Well, because large corporations largely control the laws of, of large countries, right? And so if the laws of countries are being modified so as to make life easier for multinational corporations, then, then it, in a way it's a kind of socialism, but the benefit is for corporations more than for people. Right? Right, right. It's a, I mean, the, the vision of capitalism as a sort of level playing field where companies are competing in a meritocracy, it's not really what you what you, you see in the world particularly if something like mobile there's a limited amount of bandwidth who, who gets the bandwidth well that's determined by government in cooperation with with with, with, with big companies right i mean okay. the, the internet who sets regulations for the for, for the internet right so i think things are so cross-connected now that it's 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 not like a, a fruit market out out in the, in, the, in the street or something where you have some free market and, and, and competition. Right. You have humongous companies with trillions of dollars. Well, they're now monopolies and oligopolies, right? Yeah, so and, they have a lot, and they have a lot of lobbyists and, and they're getting politicians elected and they're, and they're sculpting the laws. And I mean, in some ways it works incredibly well, right? And I think there are some things these big companies do great, like the mo mobile phone or something, right? A, yeah. a little startup isn't going to make that at the present time. It, it's really hard. You have all these different pieces that have to be built by different subcontractors, right? So, I mean, large corporations certainly have their place, and, you know, intelligence organizations have their place because there are psychotic people out there, and there are nasty organizations that want to kill a lot of people, and that's sort of how the human brain works, right? So good-hearted so, people, smart people, developing this AI, but they're doing it for a lot of times the wrong reasons. And yeah, therefore be, because of the way society is, is organized, rewarded. right? right? right. Uh, yeah, it's the incentive structure. And, you know, there's the whole question in the U.S. of whether corporations are people. And that's a legal question, but it's also sort of a philosophical question because you can a corporation, in a way, is its own organism, right? Like... No one controls it. If, if the CEO or the board try to direct it in the wrong way, they can get thrown out somehow, right? And, yeah. and so it, it's its own organism, and they're, they're sort of like parasites on, on humanity in a way that are directing humanity in, 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 in certain ways. And I, I think, but there's, there are opposing dynamics also, right? So, and the internet is quite fascinating that way because. It, the internet is not owned by anyone, it's not controlled by anyone. Because of that, like Iran is still on the internet in spite of all these crazy international sanctions. Mobile developed a more of a corporate way. And you can think about like if, if the internet 
had developed like mobile hubs, and every time you went from one country to another, you'd have to pay some insanely high roaming fee just to use the internet, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it didn't, right? Now, BitTorrent, largely used for illegal purposes, but it's interesting, like it, it, you know, it got rid of huge companies. It disrupted industries quite, quite rapidly through enabling file shares. And you know, for academic publication, academic publishers are gonna be mostly obsolete by Sci-Hub and Libgen and like peer-to-peer -peer sharing of scientific books and papers. So these sorts of things show that there's a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized mode of interaction that, that gives you hope. Can have a disruptive power. And Linux, you can look at similarly, right? right. I mean, open Linux, source. Linux, open source. I had a lot of arguments about that in the 80s. People are like, that'll never succeed because people need to be paid to do their work, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, what happened is open source just, it interpenetrated with the capitalist economy. A lot of people are paid to work on open source software, right? But open source has huge advantages, right? And I, I mean, that, that, that's enabled the whole robot hacker ecosystem to come about through Raspberry Pi and other Linux-based maker kits. You know, you have Android is, is, run, is running on Linux. And because of that, you know, if the US government goes ape shit and says like Huawei can't use Android anymore, well, most of it's open source. Huawei can use most of it. They just have to put a different layer on top of the of the the base of of Linux, which is which is in their phones, right? So I mean, and most servers on the internet are running Linux, which means that you know Iran, North Korea, China, anywhere can run all the servers using using Linux. So it get, it gets you away from corporate politics. It gets you away from intergovernmental politics, right? So we see things like Linux, BitTorrent, SciHub, uh, LibGen, now Bitcoin and Ethereum and the whole crypto economy. Yeah, let's talk about that. Internet, so all these are peer-to-peer -peer things which are owned by everyone and no one. And so this is one dynamic where it's increasing centralization and oligopolization is a different dynamic. Both of these are being enabled and encouraged by computing and communication technologies. And they're in like co opetition with each other, right? They're, they're opposed, but yet they're also supporting each other in, in various ways.